Section 72 of A Body of Practical Divinity by Thomas Watson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Of Repentance, Acts 11, verse 18. Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Repentance seems to be a bitter pill to take, but it is to purge out the bad humor of sin. Repentance is, by some antinomian spirits, cried down as a legal doctrine, but Christ himself preached it. Matthew 4, verse 17, from that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, etc. And in his last farewell, when he was ascending to heaven, he commanded that repentance should be preached in his name. Luke 24, verse 47. Repentance is a pure gospel grace. The covenant of works would not admit of repentance. It cursed all that could not perform perfect and personal obedience. Galatians 3 verse 10. Repentance comes in by the gospel. It is the fruit of Christ's purchase, that repenting sinners shall be saved. Repentance is wrought by the ministry of the gospel, while it sets before our eyes Christ crucified. Repentance is not arbitrary, but necessary. There is no being saved without it. Luke 13, verse 3, Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And we may be thankful to God that he hath left us this plank after shipwreck. First, I shall show thee counterfeits of repentance. One, natural softness and tenderness of spirit. Some have a tender affection arising from their complexion, whereby they are apt to weep and relent when they see any object of pity. These are not repenting tears, for many weep to see another's misery who cannot weep at their own sin. Second counterfeit, legal affrightments. A man has lived in a course of sin, at last he is made a little sensible. He sees hell ready to devour him, and he is filled with anguish and horror. But within a while the tempest of conscience is blown over, and he is quiet. Then he concludes he is a true penitent, because he hath felt some bitterness in sin. This is not repentance. Judas had some trouble of mind. If anguish and trouble were sufficient to repentance, then the damned would be most penitent, for they are most in anguish of mind. There may be trouble of mind where there is no grieving for the offence against God. Third counterfeit, a slight superficial sorrow. When God's hand lies heavy upon a man, he is sick or lame, he may vent a sigh or tear and say, Lord, have mercy. Yet this is no true repentance. Ahab did more than all this. 1 Kings 21 verse 27, he rent his clothes and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. His clothes were rent, but not his heart. The eye may be watery and the heart flinty. An apricot may be soft without, but it hath an hard stone within. Fourth counterfeit, good motions arising in the heart. Every good motion is not repentance. Some think if they have motions in their hearts to break off their sins and become religious, this is repentance. As the devil may stir up bad motions in the godly, so the Spirit of God may stir up good motions in the wicked. Herod had many good thoughts and inclinations stirred up in him by John Baptist's preaching, yet he did not truly repent, for he still lived in incest. Fifth counterfeit, vows and resolutions. What vows and solemn protestations do some make in their sickness? If God recover them, they will be new men, but afterwards are as bad as ever. Jeremiah 2 verse 20, Thou saidst, I will not transgress. Here was a resolution, but for all this she ran after her idols. Under every green tree thou wanderest, playing the harlot. Sixth counterfeit, leaving off some gross sin. But that is a mistake, for one, a man may leave some sins and keep others. Herod did reform many things amiss, but kept his Herodias. 2. An old sin may be left to entertain a new. A man may leave off riot and prodigality and turn covetous. This is to exchange a sin. These are the counterfeits of repentance. Now if you find that yours is a counterfeit repentance, and you have not repented aright, mend what you have done amiss. As in the body, if a bone be set wrong, the chirurgian hath no way but to break it again, and set it aright. So must you do by your repentance. If you have not repented aright, you must have your heart broken again in a godly manner, and be more deeply afflicted for sin than ever. Second, and that brings me to the second, to show wherein true repentance consists. It consists in two things. First, humiliation. Leviticus 26 verse 41, If their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, there is, as the schoolman, 
a twofold humiliation or breaking of the heart. One, attrition, as when a rock is broken in pieces, this is done by the law, which is an hammer to break the heart. Two, contrition, as when ice is melted into water, this is done by the gospel, which is as a fire to melt the heart. Jeremiah 23, verse 9. It is the sense of abused kindness causeth contrition. Second, transformation or change. Romans 12, verse 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Repentance works a change in the whole man. As wine put into a glass where water is, the wine runs into every part of the water and changeth its color and taste. So true repentance doth not rest in one part, but doth diffuse and spread itself into every part. 1. Repentance causeth a change in the mind. Whereas before a man did like well of sin and say in defense of it, as Jonah, I do well to be angry. Chapter 4 verse 9. So I did well to swear and break the Sabbath. When once a man becomes a penitent, his judgment is changed. He now looks upon sin as the greatest evil. The Greek word for repentance signifies after wisdom. When having seen how deformed and damnable a thing sin is, we change our mind. Paul, before conversion, verily thought within himself, I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus. Acts 26 verse 9, but when he became a penitent, now he was of another mind, Philippians 3 verse 8. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Repentance causeth a change of judgment. 2. Repentance causeth a change in the affections, which move under the will as the commander-in-chief. Repentance doth metamorphose the affections. It turns rejoicing in sin into sorrow for sin. It turns boldness in sin into holy shame. It turns the love of sin into hatred. As Amnon hated Tamar more than ever he loved her, to Samuel 13, verse 15, so the true penitent hateth sin more than ever he loved it. Psalm 119, verse 104, I hate every false way. 3. Repentance works a change in the life. Though repentance begins at the heart, it doth not rest there, but goes into the life. I say it begins at the heart, Jeremiah 4, verse 14, O Jerusalem, wash thy heart. If the spring be corrupt, there can be no pure stream run from it. But though repentance begins at the heart, it doth not rest there, but changeth the life. What a change did repentance make in Paul? It changed a persecutor into a preacher. What a change did it make in the jailer? Acts 16 verse 33. He took the apostles and washed their stripes, and set meat before them. What a change did it make in Mary Magdalene? She that before did kiss her lovers with wanton embraces, now kisseth Christ's feet. She that did use to curl her hair and dress it with costly jewels, now she makes it a towel to wipe Christ's feet. Her eyes that used to sparkle with lust and with impure glances to entice her lovers, now she makes them a fountain of tears to wash her Saviour's feet. Her tongue that used to speak vainly and loosely, now it is an instrument set in tune to praise God. And this change of life hath two things in it. First, the terminus aquo, a breaking off sin, Daniel 4 verse 27, break off thy sins by righteousness. And this breaking off sin must have three qualifications. One, it must be universal, a breaking off all sin. One disease may kill as well as more. One sin lived in may damn as well as more. The real penitent breaks off secret, gainful, complexion sins. He takes the sacrificing knife of mortification and runs it through the heart of his dearest lusts. Two, breaking off sin must be sincere. It must not be out of fear or design, but upon spiritual grounds, as first from antipathy and disgust, secondly from a principle of love to God. If sin had not such evil effects, yet a true penitent would forsake it out of love to God. The best way to separate things that are frozen is by fire. When sin and the heart are frozen together, the best way to separate them is by the fire of love. Shall I sin against a gracious father and abuse that love which pardons me? 3. The breaking of sin must be perpetual, so as never to have to do with sin any more. Hosea 14 verse 8. What have I to do any more with idols? Repentance is a spiritual divorce, which must be until death. 2. Change of life hath in it terminus at quem, a returning unto the Lord. It is called repentance towards God. Acts 20 verse 21. It is not enough when we repent to leave old sins. 
but we must engage in God's service, as when the wind leaves the west it turns into a contrary corner. The repenting prodigal did not only leave his harlots, but did arise and go to his father. Luke 15 verse 18. In true repentance the heart points directly to God, as the needle to the north pole. Use. Let us all set upon this great work of repentance. Let us repent sincerely and speedily. Let us repent of all our sins, our pride, rash anger, unbelief. Without repentance, no remission. It is not consistent with the holiness of God's nature to pardon a sinner while he is in the act of rebellion. O meet God, not with weapons, but tears in your eyes. And to stir you up to a melting, penitent frame, one, consider what is there in sin that you should continue in the practice of it. It is the accursed thing, Joshua 7 verse 11. It is the spirits of mischief distilled. First, it defiles the soul's glory. It is like a stain to beauty. It is compared to a plague sore. 1 Kings 8 verse 38. Nothing so changeth one's glory into shame as sin. Second, without repentance, sin tends to final damnation. Peccatum transit actu manet reato. Sin at first shows its color in the glass, but afterwards it bites like a serpent. Those locusts, Revelation 9 verse 7, were an emblem of sin. On their head were crowns of gold, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and there were stings in their tails. Sin unrepented of ends in a tragedy. Sin hath the devil for its father, shame for its companion, and death for its wages. Romans 6 verse 23. What is there in sin then, that men should continue in it? Say not, it is sweet. Who would desire that pleasure which kills? 2. Repentance is very pleasing to God. No sacrifice like a broken heart. Psalm 51 verse 17. A contrite and a broken heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. St. Austin caused this sentence to be written over his bed when he was sick. When the widow brought empty vessels to Elisha, the oil was poured into them. 2 Kings 4 verse 6. Bring God the broken vessel of a contrite heart, and he will pour in the oil of mercy. Repenting tears are the joy of God and angels. Luke 15. Doves delight to be about the waters, and surely God's Spirit, who once descended in the likeness of a dove, takes great delight in the waters of repentance. Mary stood at Jesus' feet weeping. Luke 7 verse 38. She brought two things to Christ, tears and ointment. Her tears were more precious to Christ than her ointment. 3. Repentance ushers in pardon, therefore they are joined together. Acts 5 verse 31. Repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Pardon of sin is the richest blessing. It is enough to make a sick man well. Isaiah 33 verse 24. The inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Pardon settles upon us the richer charter of the promises. Pardoning mercy is the source that makes all other mercies relish the sweeter. It sweetens our health, riches, honour. David had a crown of pure gold set upon his head, Psalm 21 verse 3, but that which David did most bless God for was not that God had set a crown of gold upon his head, but that God had set a crown of mercy upon his head, Psalm 103 verse 4, who crowneth thee with mercies. But what was this crown of mercy? You may see, verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. David more rejoiced that he was crowned with forgiveness than that he wore a crown of pure gold. Now what is it makes way for pardon of sin but repentance? When David's soul was humbled and broken, then the prophet Nathan brought him that good news to Samuel 12 verse 13, The Lord hath put away thy sin. Objection. But sure my sins are so great that if I should repent, God would not pardon them. Answer. God will not go from his promise. Jeremiah 3 verse 12. Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful. If thy sins are as rocks, yet upon thy repentance the sea of God's mercy can drown these rocks. Isaiah 1 verse 16, Wash you, make you clean. Wash in the laver of repentance, verse 18. Come now, and let us reason together, saith our Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Manasseh was a crimson sinner, but when he humbled himself greatly, the golden scepter of mercy was held forth. When his head was a fountain to weep for sin, Christ's side was a fountain to wash away sin. It is not the greatness of sin, but impenitence he destroys. The Jews, some of them that had an hand in crucifying Christ, upon their repentance, 
the blood they shed was a sovereign balm to heal them. When the prodigal came home to his father, he had the robe and the ring put upon him, and his father kissed him. Luke 15. If you break off your sins, God will become a friend to you. All that is in God shall be yours. His power shall be yours to help you. His wisdom shall be yours to counsel you. His spirit shall be yours to sanctify you. His promises shall be yours to comfort you. His angels shall be yours to guard you. His mercy shall be yours to save you. 4. There's much sweetness in repenting tears. The soul is never more enlarged and inwardly delighted than when it can melt kindly for sin. Weeping days are festival days. The Hebrew word to repent, neham, signifies consolari, to take comfort. John 16, verse 20. Your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Christ turns the water of tears into wine. David, who was the great mourner in Israel, was the sweet singer, and the joy a true penitent finds is a prelibation and foretaste of the joy of paradise. The wicked man's joy turns to sadness. The penitent's sadness turns to joy. Though repentance seems at first to be thorny and bitter, yet of this thorn a Christian gathers grapes. All which considerations may open a vein of godly sorrow in our souls, that we may both weep for sin and turn from sin. If ever God restores comfort, it is to his mourners. Isaiah 57 verse 18 And when we have wept, let us look up to Christ's blood for pardon. Say as that holy man, Lava domine lachrimas meus, Lord wash my tears in thy blood. We drop sin with our tears, and need Christ's blood to wash them, and this repentance must be not only for a few days, like the mourning for a friend, which is soon over, but it must be the work of our lives. The issue of godly sorrow must not be stopped till death. After sin is pardoned, we must repent. We run afresh upon the score. We sin daily, therefore must repent daily. Some shed a few tears for sin, and when their tears, like the widow's oil, have run a while, they cease. Many, if the plaster of repentance begin to smart a little, pluck it off, whereas this plaster of repentance must still lie on and not be plucked off till death, when, as all other tears, so these of godly sorrow shall be wiped away. Question, what shall we do to obtain a penitential frame of heart? Answer, seek to God for it. It is his promise to give an heart of flesh, Ezekiel 36, and to pour on us a spirit of mourning, Zechariah 12, verse 10, beg God's Holy Spirit, Psalm 147, verse 18, he causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. When the wind of God's Spirit blows upon us, then the waters of repentant tears will flow from us.